I'm working on Crazy, Willie Nelson, Patsy Cline. It's a nice jazzy tune with a lot of chords in it, some of which I'm not so great at. And there are a few chord transitions in this song that are giving me trouble. I don't change to them cleanly every time or quickly. Sometimes I fumble around a little, sometimes a finger misses a string. And I wanted to show uh, how I use the metronome uh, to practice chord changes. Because we focus a lot on banjo on what to practice, and we don't talk as much about how to practice. This is not the only way to practice. There's many ways to practice as there are people, but it can be really valuable, especially when you're starting out, to see how other people approach practice, how they deal with the tough spots. Because the ways we deal with the tough spots, the, the ways we practice, apply to everybody, uh, no matter what your skill level, whether you're a beginner or an expert or an intermediate. I think it's kind of all the same. Uh, a beginner that's good at practicing can teach an expert who isn't, you know, how to get better, for example. Although chances are the expert got there because they figured out how to practice. So here's a chord change I'm having a lot of trouble with. It is a bar F up here to an E minor right there. And you can see I have to look at it, I have to fumble around, it's kind of slow. And if I'm in a hurry, like when I'm actually playing the song, I might, like right there, I've got muted strings, strings that aren't fretted right. That's no good. So I need to work on that. And what I'll do is set the metronome to being very slow. Uh, looks like here is about 35 beats. But I'm, when I'm starting with a chord change I'm having trouble with, I'm not even going to try to go that fast. I'm going to try to make the chord once every other beat. And we'll see how that goes. So here's... And then I lay my fingers down and try to get them down by the next beat. And go real slow and make sure that I never put my fingers in the wrong spot. Don't permit it because you're learning muscle memory and whatever you teach yourself here is going to be with you for a long time and it will be hard to undo if you get it wrong. So it's way more important to go very slow and get it right every time than it is to go faster and get it wrong sometimes. It is phenomenally easy to build bad muscle memory that may be with you for a long time. You may not even know it. So just trying to get it right every time and pay attention to where the fingers go down. Is there any attempt, any uh, tension in my fingers? Is there anything that's keeping me from putting them where they're supposed to go? And so far, this is getting easier. I'm having, you see a little fumble there. I had to think and watch where that finger went. My gold standard for chord changes, what I want for me, is that I can do it cleanly every time and I can do it without looking. Now you're always looking a little, you're using kind of peripheral vision you know, to see where your fingers go, but without looking intently and having to figure, see which finger is landing on which string. It should be just kind of automatic. And here we're just building that muscle memory, trying to make it automatic, trying to make it easy, making sure there's no tension, and we're not going to increase the metronome speed until then, until we're actually it's so easy we're getting bored with it. It's like, yeah, I've done it 20 times now just right, and I'm starting to speed up a little. I'm having the metronome hold me back instead of feeling like the metronome is rushing me, and that's when I know it's about time to bump the speed. So let's do that. A little more speed. Doesn't matter what speed it is, it just needs to feel a little more rushed than it was before. I'm strumming it a little, uh, not a real fast strum because I want to hear every string and I want to hear whether they're all fretted cleanly, whether I've got a good note. 
whether any string is muted or you know not, not fretted right. One of the things people don't uh, talk about when they're talking about practicing is that it can be mind-numbingly boring. And you have to develop a kind of obsessive compulsive ability to do the same thing 400 times and still find it interesting enough to keep doing it. And what keeps me interested is seeing myself get better. Because I can see, well, it's getting easier now. I'm having a lot easier time making that chord change. It's coming more automatic, not as fast as I want. I'm still, the fingers aren't all coming down right on their strings right away, but it's better. And as long as I'm getting better, I can stay interested. If a practice session gets to where I'm not getting better, and I change how I'm practicing, I try to figure out what's going on, why am I not getting better, I stop. That's when I'm done practicing, because there's no point in it. So now I'm rushing the metro. It's probably time to speed it up. Here we go again. So what it, this is, uh, we'll say 60 beats a minute, and I'm doing one every other, so this is really 30. So it's one chord change every two seconds is what I'm going for right now. That feels a little rushed. It's gonna, it's good. The metronome should push you a little bit. Not so much that you start making a bunch of mistakes, but enough so you feel like, oh wow, I'm having to work hard and focus to keep up with it, which I am now. So far, a little slow there. I want those fingers to just come down by themselves exactly where they're supposed to be. See, that wasn't what I wanted there. That pinky finger, I have a lot of trouble with that missing that first string when I'm fretting. And it needs to come down just right. It needs to come down with, you know, no sideways uh, force that's going to, like, knock the string off the fretboard. So we're getting better already. It's kind of neat how when you do this kind of practice, you can get better pretty quick sometimes. As long as you uh, are focused, paying attention, and most critically, making sure that you never practice a mistake. You don't take a mistake you're making and keep making it because that will put it in your brain forever. And you can undo a mistake you train yourself to, but it is hard work. It can take, I've spent hours sometimes, just hours drilling out a mistake that I learned early on. Either I didn't realize I was making a mistake or I was just in a hurry uh, and uh, not paying attention. So this is what we do. This is how I do it anyway, how I practice chord changes with the metronome to get better at them, to get faster. And there's no reason for you to sit there and watch me get it all the way up to where I want to be. But that's the process. And if you're having trouble with chord changes, they don't have to be this chord. They can be any chord. They can be from open G to C, which is one that gave me a ton of trouble when I was first starting. They can be any chord that you want to do. This technique, for me, works, and I hope it works for you.